My name is Mohamed Goudouf. Today we'll discuss ice and rail protection system uh, in the aircraft. But here, for this training panel, we have it's divided into six groups. The group one is the heated pitot, and then the group two is the propeller, the icing system, and uh, and then you have here the the icing for the leading edge of the wing, as well as we have here the components for the uh, wiper system, and then the anti ice al alcohol uh, alcoholic uh, system for the uh, for the windshield and then we have a heated windshield now let us discuss this thing uh, individually first of all make sure this panel which is a control panel all switches must be in a normal position and then when you go to master switch you have a light it means now we have power in this panel okay now we're going to talk about the pitot this pitot will provide us with the uh, air data information for our flight. So whenever you turn it on, as you see here, this is switch. Uh, it is a toggle switch, spring loaded. If you don't hold it, it will go back. So if you hold it, what will happen is this will be heated and the heat it is too high. Anytime you're using this uh, switch, be careful, nobody will get close so that avoid any injury. The second one is the uh, propeller. The propeller, if you see here, here is the DIC timer, and then we have a brush. This brush is mounted to the engine, and then we have the propeller slip ring, which is mounted to the back, the back of the propeller. Here is the propeller. The propeller has had an in, uh, inboard and outboard size. It is an aerofoil shape. So we hit one side and then we hit the other side. So let us do the operation here. We go to the proper and hit. If you see here the indication, will give you that this is right engine and this is the left engine. Now the red here, actually this timer is timed between 30 to uh, 40 seconds. It, it depends on the design of the, of the engine or the, or the propeller. Now, what will happen is, it heats one side, the import, and then it will go to the other side as soon as the 30 uh, seconds elapse. So, this is, uh, uh, the, uh, this is the timer, as you see now. Okay, the next one is the boot type. The boot type, this boot is with the leading edge for the wing. The leading edge of the wing, well, what we have to do is we need a pneumatic to provide this, uh, the system in order to act activate. So here we put a bleed air. This is instead of the bleed air, we have a pump, and this pump is a vacuum pump. It is pressurized. As you see here, we have a control valve. We have an inlet filter, uh, ejector shuttle valve, and also we have here an air safety valve. Now, air safety valve, if there is any overpressure, it will relieve it, it's act like a relief valve. And the shuttle valve, what it do is it directs the pressure towards the boot. And now if you see here, I'm gonna put the switch on. If you see the switch, you see here the light, it means, red light means, now the boot is, as you see, as you see, it is pressurized, and also you have the reading for the sanction and reading for the the IC. Okay, look at it again. You can repeat the same action now. You just pour on. Okay, you have a reading here, and you reading there as, uh, as well. All right. So we turn now the pump off. The third one is the alcohol system. The alcohol system, we have an alcohol tank and we have a, an alcohol pump. We have an alcohol flow regulator and we have a bar at the top, which is a spray bar. Here in this trainer, what we do is we collect it and we take it back to the tank. But in the actual life, once you spray it, then it will be vibrated because you know the alcohol molecules is very, uh, 
uh, uh, it go very apart from each other and it will uh, vibrate right away. Now, let us operate this R4 pump. As you see now, what will happen is, here you have a fluid, which is alcohol. The alcohol will come down here to the pump, will be pumped. Now the alcohol flow regulator, it regulates the, the alcohol going to the, to the bar and spray on the windshield. Okay? Now, the second one we have here is the wiper. The wiper we have, the wiper drive motor and also a, a motor converter and then a wiper actuator. So what will happen is, actually when, the, when this pump is working, let me put on, okay? So if you, if you see here, what will happen is, the movement, the rotary movement will be converted to reciprocated and then will go back and forth at the top of the windshield. All right? Now, let's go to our heated windshield. This heated windshield, this windshield actually, it is, uh, consists of a coating, uh, glass, and also a rubber. Now, the importance of the coating is, it is very helpful that you don't see that much rain stain because of the coating and also it strength the assembly of the windshield against uh, any impact or any uh, pressure on it and also it, uh, it, uh, it resists any heat and pressure as well now the way we heat it is it is we connect it to the wiring and we have embedded wire which is a loop inside the inside the, the windshield and also we have a sensor as well as we have a control a control uh, temperature control controller right right here so this controller would control the pressure or we may have also a thermostat which controls the the temperature whenever we heat it up so that we use it when we need it because you don't have to heat it at all the time and take a risk. If you see here the light, the light is on, it, it means it is red. You know, any red light in the cockpit, it is a warning so, the, so that they pay attention that and do their follow-up. The heating, it takes some time to get heated, but as I told you, uh, be careful that don't, they, don't, don't, don't go close to any heated components and the panel. So uh, after you finish working on the panel, please make sure please you put everything back to normal. Uh, that's about it today for this uh, ice and rain protection. We'll see in the second uh, section, inshallah. Thank you. Icing is the only weather phenomena that will alter the aerodynamic shape of an airfoil. It can become a serious in-flight danger and occurs in temperature band from below 10 Celsius to minus 40 Celsius in an area with visible moisture. Primarily this happens when either supercooled water droplets freeze on impact in below 0 Celsius temperature as they contact aircraft surface such as the wings or if an airplane is parked under freezing temperatures or active snowfall and thus degrading their ability to produce lift. Ice and rain protection comprises two basic types of detection systems namely accretion that senses ice buildup and the inferential that senses moisture and freezing temperature conditions that can lead to ice formation. In response to specific situation, the flight deck crew switches on the anti-ice to prevent ice from forming or the de-icing mechanism to shed ice if it has formed already. There are three basic methods to get rid of ice in the air, namely mechanical, thermal, and fluid-based. Inflatable boots used on propeller-driven planes are an example of mechanical systems. Thermal de-ice or anti-ice is accomplished by electrical heating and engine bleed air, whereas alcohol, methanol, or glycol type fluid-based systems are used for windscreen as well as wing leading edge and propeller de-icing. 
The surfaces that are prone to icing dangers are the leading edges of wings, vertical and horizontal stabilizers, engine intakes, propellers, probes, wastewater drain mast, static ports, antennas, and windscreen. Jet planes have little controllability issues from icing on the tail section. That is why most of them are not given protection on those areas. That, however, is not the case for propeller-driven planes. Anti-icing in jet aircraft is accomplished by a combination of bleed air and electrical power. Airfoil or wing anti-icing is accomplished by routing engine bleed air to ducts in the wing leading edge and leading edge devices after passing through a pre-cooler. This bleed air is tapped off of the earliest stage compressor to minimize impact on engine performance and when necessary augment from a later stage compressor. Pneumatic boots de-icing is for turbo propeller airplanes only since their engines cannot bleed off large amount of air or have enough electrical output for thermally heating of surfaces where ice protection is required. That however is not always the case. The other important area that requires icing protection is the engine inlet cowling where ice is either prevented from forming or shut off by thermally heating the engine inlet surface. For this, the air is tapped off from the high stage compressor bleed air and routed through to the inner surface of the cowling to de-ice it on the outer side. The air is then overboarded through an outlet on the engine SL. Compressor bleed air type heating does have the fuel expense and performance side effects. Which is why the Boeing 787 uses electric compressors and have enough output to provide the whole range of heated air including ice protection. Finally we have the windscreen ice protection which is achieved by spraying methanol or alcohol based fluids to de-ice. Wipers are used to keep the windscreen clear from rain and should never be used on dry screen. Windscreen is also heated electrically and or pneumatically to protect against freezing. And then we have the pneumatic rain removal systems that direct a flow of heated air over the windscreen which breaks the raindrops into small particles that are then blown away. Secondly, heated air prevents moisture from freezing on the windscreen. The air can either be bled off the engine or blown from an electrical blower. Rain repellent chemicals are not in use anymore for environmental concerns. Instead, the windscreens are now given the hydrophobic seal coating, which causes raindrops to beat up and roll off, allowing the flight crew to see through with very little distortion. Hydrophobic coating reduces the need for wipers and gives the flight crew better visibility during rain. Enjoy the weather, be safe, and fly well.